And Ellen, you, you, if you take a look at what the Supreme Court came up with, at, at the end of the day, that is sacrosanct. So the belief is that the speaker and the and the sides of parliament, especially the NDC side, they need, as the minority side, they need to adhere to that. How do you think we need to bring everybody together into the house so that we move on with government business? Good morning to my cherished viewers. I, I've said it here once, and I'll repeat it again. This particular parliament has been a drama-filled parliament. It started a drama right from their inception, and I'm not surprised they are finishing up with the drama. So, um, they have a job to do. Mm. Ghanaians voted for them to do a certain job. So I expect that they will come together and do it. My little issue is that we are, we are three weeks away from an election. True. Sure. Most of the members of parliament are going for re-election. So I, I don't see how they are going to show up in parliament till after the elections. I mean, that's my, my, my personal projections. I Honestly, I don't see how they are going to come. So let's see how it goes. Um, I, I'm sure that as it is now, all of them are concentrated. Those who are going for re-election are concentrated on their elections. And I'm sure that after the elections, which is barely 23 days away, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 see days. To the, we'll see to the work, work, work that has to be done. But uh, um, because we are going for a vote, mm. I think that this particular parliament has not been too helpful for Ghanaians. When you compare them to the other parliaments that have come, they haven't really gotten down to do work. It's been constant, consistent bickering. So as we're going to vote, um, I am for, for the MPP. I'm campaigning vigorously for Dr. Baumia. You vote for Dr. Baumia, you vote for the parliamentary candidate of the MPP. Um, it's not by force that you vote for Dr. Baumia. We have to appeal to you to vote for him. Whoever you decide to vote for, I think we should appeal to Ghanaians to vote for the parliamentary candidate of whoever they chose to vote for. Because we cannot afford to have this situation in another parliament. We need to get work done. They have shown us that they are not prepared to work together. You're saying that if there so, has to be any composition, it has to be I mean, overwhelming, so you should at least go for the for government in power exactly. and then also for those in parliament. Exactly. So, so, so that there's we can consistency. Get, we can get work done. Parliament is supposed to do certain work. We, we, we pay them to do something. But at first, you know, when um, we started this off, it was 137 plus 1 and 137. Mm. Mm. A lot of people had hopes. They were very happy that, um, at least with the parliament straight down the middle, they were going to do quite a lot of work and scrutinize a lot of. But, I mean, the last four years have shown us that that, that doesn't work. So, as a politician and, and the politician of the NPP, I think that whoever you vote for, vote for the parliamentary candidate. No skirt and blouse. No, 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 there shouldn't be skirt and blouse. And let whichever party that comes into government, hopefully is the, is the, is the government of Dr. Baumia, have a resounding majority to work with. We cannot afford another four years of this situation. As, as, has the campaign us. been going for Dr. Baumia so far? So far we are in the Ashanti region. I crisscross between the Ashanti region and the Bunu and Bunu East regions. And we, I, I keep on saying it consistently that we are on the grounds. Um, December 7th, we we'll show everybody the work we have done. We've worked very hard. He's still in the Ashanti region. We we'll finish up in the Ashanti region, and then we we'll move up north again. We are consistent with this. We've been very consistent with this campaign, and we are finishing hard. Well, certainly, uh, uh, Ellen. Now let's come to the substantive and talk about um, the electoral commission and how we need to perhaps uh, better take a look at its own role that it needs to play. Twenty-three days to this election, and what our expectation should be. Especially now that you have been going around consistently. I think the Electoral Commission has been given a job to do. Mm. And mm. so far, I'll say they are doing their job. What I really don't get, mm. and I spoke to your producers about it, what is this business about not giving accreditation to CSOs? Did they give a reason for it? Because if I remember, and I believe I've been following politics for quite some time, every election, CSOs um, are there. They observe. Or oh, I'm wrong. Maybe I, I'm wrong. But from what I know, CSOs show up. So did they give us a reason why they don't want CSOs to show up at this time? If they don't have any good reason to it, I don't know why they want to change the status quo. I mean, so far, 
we've they've had uh, quite a lot of challenges with this particular election, including the fact that one candidate dying, and it is a grey area. It's never happened before. Is so it? I think so, but we haven't had an election where one of the pre presidential candidates had passed on. So it's it's a new situation that they've gone through. I think they've handled it quite well. So what is this new thing about not giving CSOs accreditation? They should let us know. And CSOs are part of the whole process. They keep an eye on it. And they actually help us when we are done with the elections to know whether it was free and fair. They give their reports. They tell us what happened. And it helps us to better our, our, our next elections. So if the EC has a problem with the CSOs, they should let us know. But I think this blanket ban... I don't think it goes down well with anybody. Uh, they should let us know. Otherwise, we should stick to the, 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 the normal stuff that we do during elections. 23 days to elections, you don't want any upheavals. You don't want the whole thing to go smoothly so that when you win, you know you have won. When you lose, you quietly go and sit at home and you help the winner to, 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 to govern the country. Uh, we know that Dr. Baumia is winning, so we are not really interested in any upheavals. We want the thing to go and go smoothly. So please, Electoral Commission, let us know why you don't want CSOs, you don't want to give them accreditation. Why? Mm. I, I just want to know why. Did they give well, any reason? Oh, well, so so the, these are a crop of civil society organizations, not like the regular... CDG. Uh, and so they'll the, give the CDG ones. They'll give well, them, so, so, they'll give so, ones. so we're, we're waiting for the responses from the Electoral Commission because what... Um, we know is that Kodeo and some of those regular ones would always be in the mix, but s some of them um, may not have the same stature like them. So uh, we well, don't know whether. I, I just think that I mean, people new things come up all the time, new institutions come up all the time. So are we saying that we don't want new CSOs to come up? And if new ones have come up, I mean, when you give them, so you rather work with the old ones than with the new ones. Why don't we also want to train the new ones? Why don't we want them to also show up and also go through the process? Because in the next few elections, they will be the old ones. So I really don't get it. Unless they have a particular reason, they should let us know. If they don't have any particular reason, I think any CSO that is credible, that has been registered as such, and is interested in monitoring the elections, should be given an accreditation. I mean, it doesn't spoil anything. And as we're going, knowing that the latest Afrobarometer is indicating still public trust for the Electoral Commission is not up to the optimum. How do we balance that going into this election? My dear, public trust for the EC in any elect election, election year will not be 100%. It is how the, the EC behaves and how they, they, they do their things that will make the public trust them. 23 days away from an election. Why do you want to keep some CSOs away? That's my question. Well, if you do this, then the, the, the trust that we are talking about, I mean, people start looking at you with, 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 with some eyes. So please, the EC should let us know why they don't want to give these CSOs accreditation. Is it, is it that it is, they are criminal organizations, they are not properly registered? What is the problem? Mm. If they don't have any problem with it, just the simple mere fact that they are new, Mm. There's nothing wrong with having new people on board. Well, so a... for me, I, I think this is a needless... They're just bringing... It looks like the EC also wants some attention sometimes, but there are some attention you don't need. The criticism is that... The, 23 days to elections. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Why would you want to court controversy again? If their people are interested, you've done their background checks, they can do the job. They, are, they fit into all the legal parameters for a CSO. What is the problem? Mm. Honestly. Uh, um, Ellen, you, you've heard it. So it means, what will be your clarion call on the EC then, just in a minute? Let me first um, say that the EC is not in cahoots with the NPP mm. to rig any election. The NPP has done solid work, and we know we are winning these elections hands down. So we do not need anybody to help us win anything. We know how to win elections, and we are going to win it by... By, by a virtue of our hard work and the fact that Ghanaians want us to, to continue in power. And so for that to happen, as I said in my earlier submissions, we do not want any noise making and uh, looking for trouble when there's no trouble. Giving um, these CEOs the, um, the accreditation will not take anything away from the EC. Mm. And as I said, if they have any reason why they don't want to give it to them, when you wrote them the letter, you should have explained to them. 
We are not giving it to you, as he said, because there's something wrong with your, 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 your registration. Let them know. You just don't give people a blank, blank statement like that. It's unfair. They are part of, of, of the system. They are they're also Ghanaians or whoever they are. They have a right to do it. So let them know why you will not give to them. I'm sure they have given them the, 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 reason. the reasons. They will not be up in arms about it. And so they shouldn't do that. They should do their work. But then the MPP is doing this work. And the MPP has won elections with even when we were in opposition. So if we are going to win when we are in power, we do not need the EC to do anything for us. The EC should focus and do their work and let us have peace and quiet. 23 days to elections. You know, we are all finishing hard. We are winding down on this matter. They shouldn't bring in new matters when there's no need for it.